Well, hello everybody. We are at the flea market this early morning. It's kind of a cool, crisp August morning here in Michigan. It's actually going to be about 90, but when I got up and left, it was still in the 50s here in Michigan. But we're going to go check out the flea market. They only opened a few minutes ago. See what kind of things we find. Um, kind of wanted to come out here for a few reasons. A, I love flea markets. One thing you may not know about me is I actually supported my way through college, not to pay the tuition, but for the housing, food, and that kind of stuff, by buying and selling used video game systems. Um, now, majority of that was on Amazon and eBay, but then I would also go to flea markets every Saturday and Sunday and actually did pretty well at it. It was a lot of fun. I really enjoyed it. Uh, sadly, that flea market closed. As I said, most of my money came from Amazon and eBay. People moved more and more online. Number of people going to flea markets goes down. So that flea market, Studio 28, decided it would be best to shut down and they're now being built apartments there. So I miss that. But Trufant Flea Market here in Trufant, Michigan, I hope I'm saying that right, claims to be one of the oldest continuously running ones in Michigan. Depending on where I've read, it's somewhere between 80 and 90 years of continuous every year operation here at the flea market. And I've never been to it. It's a little ways away from my home, good 45, 50 some minute drive. We're going to check it out. Now, I love old video game systems, looking for maybe some stuff for the house, just some random items. We'll see what we find. Maybe some cool stuff. Right before we went to Texas at a garage sale, I found it was a reprint in the, from the 60s, but it was a 1918 Sears catalog, if I remember correctly, uh, with you know the full, like, everything you could buy from Sears in the 1910s. It was really cool. I love finding things like that too. So we're going to head in and check it out. Now, if you're new here, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, hit that thumbs up. I really appreciate it. it. lets YouTube know you enjoy what I do here. And hopefully I can help you find something interesting, something cool. Now, why do this? Well, to kind of document it, to be honest with you. It's a very weird time in our country with the pandemic, with the political situations and more. And I remember, um, you know, sometimes you remember the big things I should say in life, but you don't forget like, okay, what during this pandemic, what was it like going to a flea market back then? What was it like in Michigan? And what kind of made me think of that a little bit is I've been digitalizing my old summer camp memory videos. Um, uh, some of them I was there and some of them the camp friend who works there gave me to digitalize for them. One of them was a 1989 uh, memory video. They would do these videos that shoot all summer, turn it into like a one hour long VHS tape and mail it to the kids who went there. And also use that for promos to entice new families to come. Well, in that video for 1989 was a BBC little bit and a little bit from the directors that at the end of the Cold War in the late 80s, there was a program where the, the Soviet Union would send 40 of their kids to the United States and America would send 40 of their kids to summer camps in Russia for a month. So summer camp diplomacy. And that camp, Camp Waziata in Maine, which is still going strong, um, had Russian Soviet Union um, kids spend a whole month there interacting with U.S. kids, 40 of them. It was really cool. Well, if it wasn't for that little video, that's kind of one of those things that got lost to history. So, I, you know, I think videos like this may help us not forget some of the things that happened in history. And hopefully maybe someday they'll be of interest to people. I'd love to know what you think of more vlog style videos like this, more exploring videos. Um, and maybe we talk more about my life. So I'd love to hear from you. Leave me a comment. Let me know what you think. But let's get in there and check it out. done shopping at the flea market spent about two hours in the flea market working my way through everything out there 
uh, had a lot of fun. Absolutely huge flea market. I'm sure I probably missed a row of booths somewhere. A lot of food, a lot of fun, a lot of activities happening, homemade stuff, junk sellers, resellers for books, DVDs, all kinds of stuff. Absolutely had a blast. Spent about $7 and I got um, two things for me and I got a couple things for my daughter. Now the big thing for me is this is a game I played, Golf Challenge Pebble Beach. I played this a lot as a kid. Um, four bucks, got it for three. I did find it later for two dollars, but the, the condition of it was very poor. That was a lot of fun. Um, I do have a favorite first person shooter game, um, and that was Delta Force Black Hawk Down on the PC, not on the PlayStation. And they had this guy, originally 20 bucks. Uh, don't know why I got it. I just, I love this game. I still actually have it installed on my laptop. When I travel, I still play the missions and actually people still play it online. You can still play the online servers. And I got it just kind of cool for a dollar. So three or four dollars in total there. And then I got um, four of these. So eight dollars actually in total. Uh, big fan of picking up VHS tapes for my daughter's movies. Some of the movies are very hard to find or very expensive. We used to do Disney movies a lot on VHS. Now we have another way to get Disney movies. But I got an Elvin, Elvin and the Chipmunks for a dollar. And then my daughter likes the Bernstein Bears books, Bernstein, excuse me, Bear books. I always say that wrong, Bernstein is what I always wanted to say. But they got I got three of them VHSs in the dark. Um, play ball and the messy room plus a terrible termite. Now, uh, my daughter definitely needs help with her messy room, so this is probably gonna be the first one I will <laughs> play for her. Uh, but I like those when I was a kid. I don't think she's ever seen the TV show, so I thought that would be kind of cool. Definitely a lot of things I had to say no to, uh, but I had a lot of fun. Now, a few tips from somebody who sold at flea markets and somebody who um, has done a lot of shopping. The best deals are typically now what the reseller booths. Now resellers are great people. They do a lot of work. They, when I was doing it, I restored and fixed a lot of video game systems that probably would have ended up in the trash if it wasn't for myself working on them, restoring them and more. But you're rarely gonna get the best deal there. Usually for DVDs, books, um, video games, they know what the best mo ones are and they're gonna sell the most expensive stuff online. Often, like with this game, it was just mixed, just like three or four of these games mixed in with a bunch of other junk. That's where you're gonna find the best deal. I found another NES seller. He had a decent selection, nothing crazy. It's not like a Super Mario Brothers 3 or anything. And he wanted $10 per game. I'll tell you this, those games were not $10 games. His thing was, well, you know, if you buy three, I'll give you 20 each or 20 for three or you know, if you find a better deal, tell me I'll buy them. I'm like, I'm sure you will buy them all up and then sell them for 10 bucks. Um, they are always the best deals. On the flip side, you know, when you're going to a booth that has just stuff everywhere and then there's just like one or two of these laying around or they're, you're digging through a box and you're finding stuff, that's where I find the best deal. Often they don't maybe know exactly what it is they're selling. Uh, so keep that in mind. Though I will say some sellers will occasionally place good items deep in their boxes so that people will keep coming back digging through their boxes they buy some other stuff because they're hoping to find that one good item they found last time so keep that in mind um that was a cool experience going there it was a flea market definitely r r worth the trip if you're in michigan true michigan worth the drive dollar park a couple other tips real quick if you are um in a booth without pricing I can tell you as a seller, sellers do this all the time. They will price an item based on what they think you're willing to pay. So I've often would have sellers next to me and they wouldn't price anything. Somebody would come up and they're like, oh, this guy looks like he has a good amount of money. So $15. Somebody comes up and they don't look like they have a lot of money. They may say $10. And they do that just based on what they think people can pay. You can agree with that or not. I'm not defending it. I'm not saying it's right or wrong. I'm just saying that's what happens. So keep that in mind. Be a little wary of booths that don't price things. Often I'll get a lot more aggressive in my negotiations with them. Then, for instance, this book was listed for $1.50, offered a dollar, the guy took it. Um, you know, I find when prices are marked, they're often less willing to negotiate than somebody who just throwing out prices. So keep that in mind. Now, not political comment, not really gonna go into this depth, but I was shocked to see almost no one wear masks. And I mean, 
no one. I wore a mask. Maybe out of every 50 vendors, one vendor was wearing a mask. Um, social distancing not happening. That was interesting during all this. Uh, very different in Texas where everybody was wearing masks no matter where I was. Uh, not everybody, but 90% of people. Very interesting. So that's my trip. Uh, I think we're gonna do more. It was kind of a little interesting videoing. Definitely not a place that people like you videoing in. So I had to be kind of careful about that, respectful of the fact that a lot of people didn't want to be on video. So uh, keep that in mind. But I think we'll do more fun things like this. I think I may get a different type of camera. So it doesn't look like I'm just walking around with a big camera when I do these kind of things. So leave me a comment. Let me know what you think of these videos. And let me know if you're a big flea market. Do you have any flea marketing tips? Do you have any um, suggestions? I'd love to hear from you. Until then, don't forget to hit subscribe. Don't forget to hit that thumbs up. I really do appreciate it. We'll be back real soon.